And now, from the beautiful city of Melbourne, where we've just started to come out of our COVID hibernation. Yeah, hi, that's us. It's the incredible Keep Victoria Beautiful Sustainable Cities Awards Ceremony. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. Now, Margaret Wolf Hungerford, yeah, we're already talking about Margie, is credited with the quote, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Well, tonight, Keep Victoria Beautiful is in the eye of the Zoom holder. It's the second year we've done this online and it's a pleasure to be back and once again, not seeing your faces. Now, even so, I want you guys tonight to clap, cheer, hoop, holler, scream, not just for the winners, but for all the amazing finalists. Make some noise as if you were here in person. I want it loud enough that it's gonna annoy the neighbors. That message is not endorsed by KVB. It is the thoughts and expectations of the host alone. My name is Charlie Ranger and I'll virtually be your virtual host tonight. Virtually. On behalf of the board of Keep Victoria Beautiful and our guests, we acknowledge the indigenous communities as the first owners of this country. We recognize the important ongoing role that indigenous people have in our community and pay our respects to their elders and people, both living and past. We would like to give a huge thank you to everyone who made this year's awards possible, the KVB board, or as I like to call them, the treacherous surnames, Dick Gross, Enzo Bruschella, Kirsty Richards, John Valstro, and Carly Wickenton, the KVB CEO, Sabina Wills, our judges, Alan Thomas, Pitt Bell, Caitlin Stanya, Caitlin Burns, Jeremy Seward, and Magella Clark, the mayors, councillors, and CEOs of urban councils everywhere. And thanks to all the KVB team, Gary Mogford, Samuel Lawson, and especially Emma White. Without Emma, we'd have less direction than an episode of The Bold and the Beautiful. Keep Victoria Beautiful also welcomes our sponsor of this year's Sustainable Cities Awards, Awards Online. Now tonight, we're gonna to list all the finalists, the highly commended, and the winners in each category. We'll start with the council categories, and then we're gonna to move to the community awards. Following that, we'll conclude with the prestigious Sustainable Cities Award for 2021. Now, I'm now gonna to throw to my hype man to help build the excitement. Hype man! Flam, flam, flam! Sustainability! Yoo-hoo! <sighs> Let's go to the first award tonight, which is the Council Energy Award. This award recognises any council project that shows leadership and innovation in conservation, production and distribution of energy. And the finalists are... Now this award has a finalist that is highly commended and they are the City of Stonington, Spotlight on Chapel of Chapel. And this year's energy winner is... The City of Greater Geelong Zero Carbon Buildings Program. The Greater Geelong Zero Carbon Building Program was established to minimise the ecological and carbon footprint of community facilities through renewable energy generation and energy efficiency improvements. The benefits of this program are being seen at sites such as the LeisureLink Aquatic and Recreation Centre, which was one of our highest energy consuming buildings. The installation of a 230 kilowatt capacity rooftop solar system, energy efficient lighting upgrades, automated building control systems, and upgraded heating and cooling systems have dramatically reduced the carbon emissions associated with the operation of this site. The next award we have is the Council Environment Award. Now this award recognises any council projects that protect, restore, and prevent damage to the natural environment. And here are your finalists. This award has a finalist that has been highly commended, and they are Bella Wynn Birrali Family Centre Sustainability Champions of Tomorrow. This year's environment winner is the City of Greater Geelong Environment and Waste Services for their nature-based coastal protection solution by establishing an artificial reef. In consultation with the residents along the Ramblers Road foreshore, 
the City of Greater Geelong opted to trial a nature-based coastal protection solution to build coastal resilience and prevent further erosion, as well as overtopping of waves which were impacting this coastal area. It included private properties as well. The project was managed by senior environmental engineer Ralph Rube as part of his role with the Environment and Waste Department for the City of Greater Geelong. A collaborative monitoring program was established in partnership with the University of Melbourne, National Centre for Coasts and Climate, Earth Systems, Climate Change Hub and the Port Phillip Eco Centre and continues three years following the construction of the artificial reef. The reef has been very effective in preventing further erosion, stabilising and widening the beach. It has also delivered co-benefits in terms of habitat creation and restoration of seagrass. Seagrass that will come in very handy ahead of the 2022 underwater cricket season. The next award we have is the Council Litter Award. Now this award recognises a council project that takes action to address their local litter issues within the council area. Last year, I made a pun about the Litter Award being rubbish. I won't reuse that because at the end of the day, it was a bit trashy. Ho! And here are your finalists. <laughs> And this year's little winner is... It's James Walden, the Ops System Initiative. Dwellings that housed five to 50 people are being transformed into dwellings that hold thousands, spiking waste generation in a manner their resources can't cater for. The Ops System Initiative aims to combat that by integrating a hardware and software solution into operational fleet. They've turned our waste and sweeper vehicles into intelligent data capture devices. Now by integrating that system with the council's asset system, they've divided their municipality into a micro environment where they're able to view, analyze and contrast each bin, footpath and street segment to see how often they cleaned it, how often they're experiencing incidents or requests and how quickly those frequencies grow or diminish as the area continues developing. That solution is allowing them to revolutionise service delivery and create predictive modelling that's going to allow them to drive future states. The next award we have is the Council Waste Award. This award recognises projects that focus on how councils minimise what goes into landfills. Kind of like the five second rule when food hits the floor. Or as we know it in my house, the two day rule. And the finalists are The waste category has numerous finalists who are highly commended, and they are the City of Stonington, Zero Waste Early Learning Centres, the City of Port Phillip, Communal Food Organics Recycling Hubs, the City of Port Phillip again, Recycling Reset, Responding to Recycling Contamination in a Pandemic. And the winner is... It's the City of Greater Geelong again, Recycled Roads for Geelong. The City of Greater Geelong is delivering innovative road construction projects, incorporating recycled materials collected via our curbside recycling services in the construction materials. Geelong's first roads constructed using crushed glass as a replacement for sand are now open. Incorporating 3% recycled glass in the asphalt base mix means these projects use the equivalent of 200,000 glass bottles and jars in every 50 tonnes of road-based material. Crushed glass roads? There's a tiny cyclist in me and he's crying right now. The next award we have is the Council Heritage and Culture Award. This award acknowledges any council project that recognises outstanding commitment to the conservation and celebration of a community's heritage and culture. And here are your finalists. And this year's winner is, drumroll please, Communities, our country, our future, our responsibility. Our country, our future, our responsibility was a National Reconciliation Week event which took place on 27th of May, 2021. It included both live and pre-recorded segments and featured a lineup of speakers, performers and activists, including Archie Roach, Adam Goods, Auntie Judy Atkinson, Uncle Dave Wandon and Uncle Richard Franklin. 
While the event had previously been organised for an in-person audience, it was moved online in 2021 in response to COVID-19 restrictions. While it previously attracted around 300 audience members in its in-person form, the online event was able to reach an audience of about 3,000 people. It served as a celebration of Yarra Ranges Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander heritage and contemporary community. Congratulations, guys. And now for the Council Indigenous Culture Award. This award distinguishes a project that recognises outstanding commitment to the conservation and celebration of the rich, diverse culture of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. And with one finalist, suspense is at a fever pitch as to just who might win. Here are your, is your finalist. And this year's winner is Creative Communities Balit Bagurk, Strong Women of the Yarra Rangers. Balit Bagurk, Strong Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Women of the Yarra Rangers, was a community defined publication project led by Wurundjeri woman Samantha Piper, with support from an all Indigenous and all female project advisory group. This leadership approach engendered trust from participants, fostered greater engagement, and ensured the women represented in the book had control over their narratives. The project invited community to submit creative dedications to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander women with a connection to the Arrow Rangers region. These dedications were then compiled into a book to capture their important stories. Building on the NAIDOC theme, Because of Her We Can, Balit Bagurk sought to celebrate local women leaders and the many other Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander women across the Arrow Rangers who have contributed to and helped shape our community. The next award is the Council Award for Social Wellbeing. Now this award recognises any council projects that contribute to an accessible community with resilient, healthy and happy people. You know smiles are infectious, right? Oh, should I not use the word infectious too soon? Too soon. But the finalists are... The social wellbeing category has a number of highly commended entries, and they are the City of Stonington, Stonington Environmental Champions, the City of Stonington, Stonington Nature Play Handbook, and if I have to say the City of Stonington one more time, I might just drown in the letter S. And this year's social wellbeing winner is... It's Creative Communities Put Out Your Poetry. Put Out Your Poetry was a creative response to the social isolation caused by COVID-19. It invited all residents across the Yarra Rangers municipality to write and display poetry on their rubbish bins and trucks, prompted by poems written by local writers. As people went on their daily walks, they were delighted by poems in unexpected places and had a chance to feel part of a community project. Haiku, a form of poetry consisting of just three lines, was selected due to its accessibility for all ages and writing abilities. By using rubbish bins and trucks, the project sought to create an opportunity for all people, including those without the skills or technology to engage online, to express themselves creatively and connect with others. Community participation and positive feedback exceeded expectations, with over 700 residents receiving stickers and 80% of people stating that they felt more connected through participating in the project. <sighs> We're now going to have a short break. And when we come back, we'll be into our community awards. This is an opportunity to get up off our couches. I love couches, I do, but we do need to give ourselves an opportunity to get the blood pumping. I don't want you lot getting stale sitting there, all right? So now, let's throw to not me, the fitness guy. Thanks guys. Hey there, it's my job to get you up and out of the couch. Come on, I don't wanna see that stale bread routine. Let's get the blood pumping. Let's shake it off. Let's tay tay it. Shake it off. You get my drift. Okay, but this year we're gonna do something different to get the blood pumping. We're going with the sustainability theme. Our physical sustainability. Here we go. Let me see the seed. You gotta join in. Let me see the seed. Here we are, we're a seed. That's it. And now, here comes the rain. And other side, the rain. And one more time, the rain. And last time, the rain. Ooh, and now we're a seed drinking that rain. I wanna hear it, let me see you drinking. 
and we're growing. We're a tree, guys. See this? This is our leaves. Give those fingers a shake. It gets the blood all the way from the aorta to the fingies. Aorta to the fingies. Let, let me see those leaves shake. What's this? A flower. Show me your flowers, guys. Show me your flowers all the way around. That's it, all the way around. Oh, achoo! It's hay fever. You got caught by spring. Make sure we check that pollen count every day of spring, guys. Checking the pollen count. This is me reading the pollen count. All right, and let's finish this off with a nice little one, nice cool down routine. It's the organic, free range, pesticide free deodorant. Here we go. Oh, that's it. Give it a lather, guys. Really lather it on. I wanna hear your lather. Here we go. That's it, let me hear your lather. Nice, just to cool down with some free range deodorant. Ah, and that's what I like to call the sustainability jaunt. Okay, back to you guys. Woo! Thanks, exuberant exercise guy. He's just like Richard Simmons without the 80s appeal, huh? The first community award we have is for education. This award is for any educational campaign or program that results in empowerment and behavior change that builds community. It's kind of like playing The Sims. That's community, just like that. Except without the tiny little computer people in a room with no doors part. And the finalists are, The education category has a highly commended finalist, and they are MIC-8 Climate Emergency Declaration Campaign. And this year's education winner is Paula McIntosh. Paula McIntosh is a teacher and waste educator at Melbourne Girls College. Paula is the inspiration behind their 2019 National Parks Scheme for Waste campaign that kickstarted the journey to becoming a zero waste to landfill school. The NPS was a huge challenge for their community that involved removing all bins except sanitary and paper recycling bins so that staff, students and visitors had to carry home any waste they produced. The idea of the scheme was not to shift the waste problem elsewhere, but to make the community more aware of their consumption. Congratulations, Paula. The next award is the Community Award in the Community Awards. I think it relates to community. Now this award recognises any project that leads towards a stronger, more resilient and thriving community or economy. And the finalists are... The community category has a highly commended finalist and they are the Collingwood branch of the Country Women's Association of Victoria Incorporated, The Wool Project. And this year's community winner is Tarawara Museum of Art, Tarawara Field Guide, Making Paint and Ink. Tarawara Museum of Art Education's Field Guide publication series supports the development of skills needed to make, do, think, imagine and create. With an emphasis on exploring the outside world, Tarawara Museum of Art Field Guides are intended to inspire creativity and foster deeper connections to the making. The Tarawara Field Guide, Making Paint and Ink, is the first in a series of three guides to be published by Tarawara Museum of Art over the next three years. The series is made possible by generous support from the museum's education supporters. But wait, there's more. And by there's more, I mean another winner. And they are the Western Emergency Relief Network. Western Emergency Relief Network is a rotary program with a catchment across northern and western Melbourne, located in Ravenhall. Western Emergency Relief Network supplies good quality second-hand furniture, electronic and white goods to people in need without charge. Those assisted are identified as having urgent needs as a result of experiencing trauma or loss, having the need to move, or perhaps just can't afford basic living requirements, or they're struggling to buy essential furniture and other household goods. Such traumas include long-term illness, unemployment, loss of home and belongings through fire, domestic violence, lack of family support, homelessness, or refugee status. 
Our next community award is for environment. This award recognises projects that protect, restore and prevent damage to the natural environment. And here are your finalists. The environment category has multiple highly commended finalists, and they are Natured Kids, Habitat Heroes, Revegetating Habitat for the Threatened Swamp Skink, Hanson Construction Materials, Bird Refuge Floating Islands at Hanson Listerfield Quarry, Inner West Air Quality Community Reference Group, Investigation into Air Quality in the Inner West. This year's Community Environment winner is Andrea Dennett. Conservation of the Hooded Plover. Andrea helped form this group and has led, coordinated, nurtured and cared for the group's volunteers for almost 14 years. Her leadership has made a significant contribution to BirdLife Australia's Threatened Bird Nesting Birds program. Andrea has contributed many thousands of hours, walked many thousands of steps, participated in uncounted conversations, engaging and exciting individuals to care for the hooded plover and the coastal environment, which is the hooded plover's habitat. Her actions have helped ensure that this threatened species survives and her commitment to environmental sustainability sets a powerful and inspirational example to the wider community. Did you know that if a hooded plover senses its chicks are in danger, it will feign a broken wing as a means of distracting the predator and alerting its chicks. Oh, oh, my wing, my wing. Dude, what's your mum doing? Oh, she always does this when there's foxes around. She's such a show off. Ugh. Our next award is Community Litter. This award recognises a project that takes action to address local litter issues. And here are your finalists. This year's Community Litter Award has two winners. In Spanish, that's dos winners. And they are Candice Colaco Little Litter Project. Try saying that five times fast. The Little Litter Project started when Candice started noticing litter in her local area. She started raising awareness about the effects of littering and educating people on the importance of disposing of their waste in the correct way. It was tough to engage with the community at first, but she did cleanups and started engaging more people. Her cleanups began to get groups of around up to 50 people or so. And she has since been recognized by local council, podcasts, and newspapers. Excellent work. And Luisa Muscara, Love Our Streets, Airport West 3042. Chuck in the postcode, just cause. In early 2021, Luisa established Love Our Streets, Airport West with the aim of preventing litter from entering Steel Creek. After participating in numerous litter cleanups, including from a canoe while seven months pregnant, what? Louisa realized the local Steel Creek connects with the Maribyrnong River, then the Yarra, before flowing into Port Phillip Bay where her children swim. Louisa quickly realized this was a complex issue to be tackled at multiple sources and data collection would be crucial. She set up a social media page where she shares her cleanup data and education tips around waste. Steel Creek runs through several suburbs and Louisa plans to mentor others to create a chain of care of other groups upstream, including at Tullamarine, Keylor Park and Keylor and downstream, including Nidri and Essendon. Our next award is Community Waste. This award recognises a project that focuses on minimising what goes into landfills, making them land less fulls. And here are your finalists. The waste category has a finalist who is highly commended, and they are Bridge Darabin Moon Rabbit Zero Waste Cafe and Bulk Foods. And this year's Waste Community winner is... Big Group Hug. Ah, oh, give myself one right now. Founded in 2014 by mum and teacher Angela Wood, Big Group Hug's key mission is to help vulnerable children and families by providing new and pre-loved material aid such as car seats, prams, cots, clothing, 
toys, nappies, and more. These items get redistributed directly to families through community welfare agencies. The service not only helps disadvantaged children and families, but also provides a convenient way for people to upcycle usable items, ensuring they are diverted from landfill. Angela is joined by an army of approximately 300 volunteers working tirelessly to launder, repair, and breathe life back into used items, ensuring they are in good, safe working condition for 3,200 plus children per year. Amazing work. Our next community award is Social Wellbeing. This award recognises any project that contributes to an accessible community with resilient, healthy, and happy people. And here are your finalists. The social wellbeing category has multiple finalists who are highly commended, and they are Faulkner Food Bowls, Faulkner Commons, David Winter, Meals on Wheels, Raw, Resilient Aspiring Women, Garden Australia, Conversations plus Compassion equals Community, Yarra Gospel, Community Choir, Choir at Home. This year's Community Social Wellbeing winner is the Rotary Club of Caroline Springs, Busy Feet Melton. Busy Feet Melton is a dance and movement class for children with disabilities aged between 6 and 16. It is a special place where everybody is respected for their individual capabilities. Busy Feet is totally volunteer based with one-on-one -on -one support. Rotary Caroline Springs members have been the instigators of this program and have been involved with the commencement and management of Busy Feet Melton since its inception in 2014. The next category is for the Community Heritage and Culture Award. This award celebrates any project that recognises outstanding commitment to the conservation and celebration of a community's heritage and culture. And here are your finalists. The Heritage and Culture category has a finalist who is highly commended, and they are Yvette Medina, called Engagement. And this year's winner is Zeebel's Farmhouse Museum and Heritage Garden, Turning Back to Edgar's Creek. Zeebel's Farmhouse Museum, Turning Back to Edgar's Creek exhibition, traces the significant history of this waterway and our changing cultural relationship with it in Thomastown and Laylaw. As a posted museum exhibition, it is being delivered to letterboxes in Thomastown and Laylaw. The census established that these communities have lower than average access to the internet at home, and while COVID-19 has meant a pivot in museums to online programs, this does not engage all communities. The exhibition's online access is being promoted to our wider communities. Consultation regarding Aboriginal content was undertaken with the Wurundjeri Woi Wurrung Cultural Heritage Aboriginal Corporation, with an artwork commissioned from The Torch. The exhibition will inform the development and potential restoration of this natural and cultural asset. Stage two will involve public programs at the museum, a temporary exhibition and a travelling version. Funding is being sought. The exhibition is still being delivered. And now for the Community Indigenous Culture Award. This award acknowledges a project that recognises outstanding commitment to the conservation and celebration of the rich, diverse culture of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. Your finalists are... And this year's winner is... 3KND, Cool and Deadly Radio, Keeping Community Connected. 3KND has been operating for 18 years, serving the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities of Metro Melbourne and beyond. And they are the only licensed Aboriginal community radio station in the state. During the last 18 months, they have become a vital link to keep their community connected with each other, ensuring their families and community are informed with culturally appropriate messages so they stay safe and healthy. They guaranteed accurate and timely messages relating to restrictions, services, and staying sane during the lockdowns. For some of the listeners, having a familiar voice talking to them 
not at them, playing music and having interviews with countrymen about their experience, activities and cultural connection kept people from despair. Our next community award is for young legends. This award recognises an individual or group of people, all 25 years or younger, who demonstrate outstanding contribution to any of the categories. And if you don't know what Fortnite is, you're too old to win this category. Your legendary finalists are... Now, the Young Legend category has two highly commended finalists, and they are Rat Kaya and Zoe Attard, Specialist Hoops. This year's Community Young Legend winner is Sam Higgins. In January 2020, Sam was incredibly fortunate to receive an electric trike from the Dylan Alcott Foundation. When he began riding around his five kilometre radius in lockdown, Sam experienced independence like never before and his self-confidence grew exponentially. Sam won the ABC Takeover Melbourne in June 2020, a storytelling competition which allowed him to tell his story in his own words. Sam has an innate ability and desire to engage with anyone who crosses his path and passionately believes that kids with a disability should be able to do whatever they want to do. Through the Dylan Alcott Foundation and the ABC, Sam's trike riding has demonstrated the new heights that can be reached by young people with disabilities. The Trike That Stops the Nation. It's a series of six digital interviews with Sam talking to other young people with disabilities, giving them a voice and a platform to show what they're capable of in the same way as he has been afforded. All right, here we go. We're on the final stretch. We've got three prestigious awards left. These are gonna be big. First up, the Keep Victoria Beautiful Gift Fund. It was established to provide financial assistance and to encourage and support community groups to initiate new community projects. Each year, the Gift Fund provides financial support of $1,000 to one or more grassroots projects that are in the planning stage and that will deliver sustainability outcomes or reduce litter or build capacity in local communities. And the recipients of this year's Keep Victoria Beautiful Gift Fund Award go to... St. James Catholic Primary School, Brighton, growing excitement about sustainability, and Louisa Mascara, Love Our Streets Airport West, 3042. And now, for another big one. I've been hearing you, huh? you think I can't hear you through the, when's the Dame Phyllis Frost Award? The Dame Phyllis Frost Award is now. Now this award recognises an outstanding individual of community participation who also has been or is involved with Keep Victoria Beautiful. You can nominate anyone or yourself for this award, except you can't nominate yourself, believe me, I know. How do I know? I've tried, no comment. I mean, no comment. Now the winner is gonna be an individual who demonstrates that they've had years of exceptional involvement and contribution to their community, they are actively involved in protecting and enhancing their local environment. That they've shown evidence of leadership and guidance of others within and outside their community to achieve a positive community outcome. And they are a current or past participant in Keep Victoria Beautiful programs. And this year's Dame Phyllis Frost recipient is Paula McIntosh. Now we heard about Paula's amazing work at Melbourne Girls College and the Zero Waste to Landfill achievements earlier. Through Paula's drive, MGC hosted community forums that confronted their consumption issues, leading to innovative solutions, including better on-site organic waste management, and forged a partnership with the Canteen, who now provide biodegradable packaging that breaks down on-site. Paula gives up hours of her own time to inform the community about waste issues. She is a sought after speaker and has presented at numerous conferences. In 2020, Paula launched a statewide campaign, eco-friendly periods for Vic schools, and continues to inspire the community to do better around waste. Congratulations, Paula. All right, here we go, guys. It's that time, the Big Kahuna. And by the Big Kahuna, I mean the Sustainable City of the Year Award 2021. 
and would you please welcome our Dame Phyllis Frost Award winner from our Tidy Town Awards 2021, Mandy Robertson, who will announce the Sustainable City of the Year final award. Mandy couldn't be with us in the studio for this one because of a cheeky little germ I like to call COVID. You might have heard about it. Mandy, over to you. Thanks, Charlie. I'm so disappointed not to be with you in person today, but maybe next year. It's been an absolute pleasure to be involved with Keep Victoria Beautiful and to win the award this year. As such, it gives me great pleasure to announce the winner of the Sustainable City of the Year. Here are the finalists. And the winner is City of Greater Geelong. Congratulations and well done. Enjoy your night and back to you, Charlie. Thank you so much, Mandy, and congratulations to you on your award as well. Well, that brings to a close our Keep Victoria Beautiful Sustainable Cities Awards for 2021. Another year of online celebrations. I hope your lounge rooms rocked, I hope they rolled, and I hope your neighbours have been thoroughly disturbed by all your cheering. Just tell them to post their complaints to me in the mail. I will respond to them never. I would also like to thank and congratulate every single one of our entrants, finalists, and winners. You guys have, again, just done such a terrific job. If you weren't a finalist or a winner tonight, that doesn't discount the amazing work you do. You're such an important part of your community and by extension, an important part of working to make this world a cleaner, healthier, happier place. I guess we could call you guys future technologies, couldn't we? On behalf of Keep Victoria Beautiful, I would like to give a big thank you to all those who have helped to make tonight such a very special event. From everyone in the team to those who have helped all along the way. And thank you for being part of the Sustainable Cities program. We'll see you guys next year, hopefully in person. Oh, I love the credits. How good are these logos? Who made them? You guys are wonderful, all of you on screen. You're, I know you're listening to me now. Oh, I know that guy. I don't think... No, maybe I don't. You guys want a chip? Cast and crew hand? Put your hand in. There you go. Oh, what was that? People around. They've been there the whole time. Both of them. Yeah, the plot thickens. I had fun tonight. It's past my bedtime. What a great job Keep Victoria Beautiful do. They're better than any chip I've ever eaten. I'll give you that. All right, that's enough. Good night.